Welcome back. On to this conversation now, September is Alopecia Awareness Month. Alopecia is an autoimmune condition where hair follicles are damaged and can result in one's hair falling out. Now, hair loss is seen by many as something to be embarrassed about, but you are not alone, as my guest tonight once said. Actress Gail Mabalane shared her own hair loss journey back in 2021 after losing a big chunk of hair and was diagnosed with a specific type of alopecia, which forms scarring on the scalp and mostly seen in black women. She joins us now in studio to talk about this and also to share a little bit about her journey. Good evening to you, Gail. Thank you so much for joining us here on Newsnight. Good Night. evening. Thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure. Very important conversation, mm. uh, I think, to have. Let's just uh, take you back. Um, to that time in your life when you first realized that something just wasn't right? Mm. I think it's something so popular, especially amongst black women. You know, when your scalp gets itchy, you do the pat mm -hmm. or the, you know, scratching into your scalp. So that's where I was at. I was busy shooting something. I had a ponytail mm -hmm. and then I went for a routine hair wash. And to my surprise, the whole chunk of hair just came off and I had this mm -hmm. big hole at the top of my head. Um, and I immediately knew that something different was happening, but I didn't know what was going on, mm -hmm. um, which is something I think I became very passionate about because I suddenly realized that we don't know where to go when something goes wrong. You know? 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then what was then your next step? Because as you mentioned, you in that moment, you're probably so shocked. Mm. You're so confused. You don't know where to turn to. Yeah. Um, what was your next step? So the next step, which is also a very interesting one, is we go to salons. And I think one of the things that I want to really encourage our hairstylists to equip themselves with is to be able to know what to say to us when something like that happens. Unfortunately, my hairstylist at that time also wasn't sure what was going on. So we plaited my hair, um, I kept it for about a week and then it just got worse. The wow. circle got bigger. And a friend of mine suggested that, you know what, maybe you should go see a dermatologist. And mm -hmm. isn't it amazing that you don't link hair loss to dermatology, you yeah. think it's skin, right? Yes. But the truth of the matter is that our scalp is skin. So there was something wrong with my scalp and so I needed to get treatment for my scalp. I went and consulted a dermatologist who then did a biopsy, took a piece of my scalp, sent it to the lab, and then the, the, the results came back as a form of alopecia, which is CCCA, or central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, a big word. Yes. But it's really just a scarring alopecia, you know, that's very, very prominent amongst black women, um, that causes a scar, and if it goes untreated, it can cause permanent damage, because, you know, hair can't go th grow through a scar, yeah. through a scar um, which then, you know, obviously resulted in me getting treatment, and then starting to put something together to help, you know, with the regrowth of my hair. Well, so uh, what, what then caused that specific scarring? Mm. Uh, were you given those details as to what the cause of this was? Yeah, so CCCA in particular is a genetic um, kind of alopecia, okay. but it is definitely triggered just by bad hair care practices. I've had it probably laying dormant for the longest time, mm. but the application of like gel and chemical and color and pulling and all the kinds of stuff we yeah. do to our hair yeah. just progressed it so much quicker that it got to a point where now my scalp was inflamed and with CCCA like many um, alopecia uh, types you get you get inflammation where you then need to get the inflammation treated just like think of it as um, uh, as as grass grass can't grow where the soil is not good sure. so in order for your hair to grow your scalp needs to be to be healthy mm -hmm. you know so I needed to then get treatment for my inflammation on my scalp which you know in included steroid injections topical oh, steroids wow. you know a couple of things which I would always recommend that you get it properly diagnosed because alopecia is different you know mm -hmm. alopecia could be caused by stress hormonal imbalances women breastfeed and they lose their hair um, it could be genetic there's just so many things that could cause hair loss that it's important for you to understand what the cause of your hair loss is mm. and if you know then you can equip yourself better to mm. then know how to treat it and it sounds as if it's not just an, an easy fix it sounds like fixing the issue is really a journey uh, talk to me about that journey and how you handle these these very delicate emotions because yeah. I can't imagine it being an easy process yeah no it's not I mean I think I came into the industry and I had this pixie haircut and it was my look and it was my thing and losing your hair really comes with redefining your identity you're really finding who you are sure. outside of this thing that we've created, right? We're told as women that your hair is your crown. Yeah. So what then happens when you lose your hair? Do you suddenly lose your crown? Do you suddenly, you suddenly not good enough? Do you mm. lose your beauty? And I think often for us, hair is such a big part of our, our identity. Mm. Uh, and it, sh it shouldn't be, you know, because no. we, are, we are beautiful no. with or without. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's difficult to navigate those It's difficult, but I think it, it really forced me to start looking at myself. I remember saying, I saw this beautiful quote that I say to my daughter, 
so often and I, it's see your beauty without a compliment or without a mirror that we you then need to go to the inside and find your identity and who you are outside of this thing that we create on the outside yeah. because I, I wasn't sure if my hair was gonna grow back I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to salvage it so I needed to start embracing the reality that I'm okay and I'm still good enough I'm still beautiful I can still do my job mm -hmm. I'm still enough you know with or without hair yeah. and I think even that took a lot of stress off and allowed my hair to grow back because I'm sure if I'd stressed about it, it would have just prolonged Made the process. Made it worse, yeah. yeah. So you took initiative then and you created this, this range uh, this range specifically for women uh, struggling with this, this issue. Talk mm. to us about that process where you thought, you know what, I'm in the situation now, mm. um, what do I do? Mm. Do I help myself? Do I uh, research and, and figure out how I'm going to, to navigate this? Where mm. did the idea come then for you to start this, this range? So when I went and saw my dermatologist who then helped with the treatment of the alopecia, which is a medical condition, I then struggled to find products that supported mm. my regrowth process. Mm. You know, stuff that are paraben free, that are sulfate free, that stimulate the regrowth of hair, you know, that has vitamin supplements that can assist in the regrowth of the hair where there are hair follicles. Um, and so I started doing some research alongside a dermatologist and a team of incredible women, you know, who helped put this product together. And Ethnogenics was birthed out of really just wanting to be part of the solution. I think the first time I went public, I just had this flood of women say to me, it's happening to me. Where did you go? What do you use? What did you do? Mm -hmm. And then when my hair started slowly growing back, a lot of people, men and women, wanted to know, well, what did you do? You know, and I really just wanted to create um, awareness, but also come up with a solution, at least part of it, you know, to help um, people with this, with really a journey that can be so... It can be really hard, it can be lonely, you can literally feel like no one knows, no one sees it. Mm -hmm. um, and I really just wanted to be part of the solution. So Ethnogenics was birthed out of wanting to share information and then wanting to be part of the solution and is now one of the biggest sellers, you know, in, in clicks. And I'm really grateful Amazing. For that. Look at the yeah. silver lining. I, I know. mean, <laughs> it's, it's stunning. I think education, as you've mentioned, is a big and important part of this because often people feel trapped, they feel embarrassed, yeah. they don't know who to talk to, mm. they don't know who to turn to. Let's talk about, uh, um, the importance of perhaps early detection Oof. and and what some of those initial red flags could be yeah. uh, for women and men to say hey something's wrong here mm. maybe I need to get this checked mm. out and I think that that is one of the biggest issues is immediately when we see it we want to cover it up mm. um, and the, that's the worst thing you can do because obviously you know number one your scalp needs to breathe your scalp needs to get all the air and all the stimulation it can get so when you cover it up with a wig or with a duck or with something you you literally clogging your pores right mm -hmm. um, so early detection is itchiness um, we've been taught that itchiness is part of the process but it's actually not it's a sign that there's something wrong even if it's just you go and find out it's just dry scalp mm. that's okay but rather have it checked out sure. you know um, CCCA in particular is, can be can can result in the scalp being sore um, and we braid our hair we do cornrows and we think it's normal it's okay your scalp should be sore because mm. you've, you've got braids but it's actually not normal so itchy scalp sore scalp flaking scalp um, you know patches red patches whenever something is not doesn't look normal mm. it is not normal sure. and with a, with, a, with CCCA in particular um, it's a scarring alopecia. So if you're not detecting it early and getting treatment early, then you're causing permanent damage. And once there's a scar that forms, you know, you'll often see like women walking and men walking around with their scalp shiny. And when it's shiny, it unfortunately means there's no follicle left. Mm. And you want to, you know, uh, get to it before it gets to that point. Mm. Um, so whenever you see immediately, even if it's something that you find out it was just stress related, it's better to go and find out than to leave it and it becoming then a permanent situation where you sure. may need transfer plants which is also an option mm -hmm. um, I would honestly suggest that you get it you know checked out immediately get it properly diagnosed you know um, these concoctions sometimes that we mix in our kitchen without the knowledge can also cause cause further damage I wouldn't recommend sure. it without the guidance of somebody who knows what they're doing mm -hmm. so get it properly diagnosed and I know it can be expensive I know it can be costly but sometimes just speaking to a GP sometimes may be able to assist you just in guiding you to mm -hmm. not cause further damage I think what I've learned now is that it's important what you put on your hair and oh, to know yeah. what are in the products that you're putting uh, on your hair. I mean, we use waxes and gels That's and we braid and we plait. Yeah. Um, what are the concerns with regards to that sort of behavior when it mm. comes to our hair? I think that firstly, for the longest time, especially me as a black woman, for the longest time, even as a child, my hair care journey was outsourced to the hairstylist. I think now that I have a daughter, I'm learning the importance of understanding my hair, mm. for her to understand her hair, know what's good for her hair, know what's not good for her hair, um, and really take ownership, 
you know, of our hair. Um, but not only that, also understanding the kind of stuff we put our hair 100%. through. You know, you get, you know, there's the, the, you know, the phenomenon of wigs, which is great. I love wigs. They're great for bad hair days. They're great for every day. But know what the glue is doing to your hairline. Understand that when you cornrow your hair so tight, it doesn't breathe. You then go and you glue on a wig or you sew in a wig and you're not taking care of what's under the wig. Mm. You know, understand that that can cause long-term damage. Pulling, cornrows, coloring, you know, chemical. Um, I think it's not a bad thing if we have the knowledge and we know how to use it. And you know, you're empowered with knowledge and you know, another lady said to me the other day, you know, I relaxed my hair and then I colored on the same day. And I'm like, hmm. yeah, we know, you know, I think hmm. we're at a place now, we're in 2023 where there is enough knowledge but clearly, just by, the, by my research and going out and speaking to women, that there's still a lot of lack of information. Mm. A lot of the alopecia that I'm seeing is self-inflicted. And I think that that is a big thing because yeah. we do it to ourselves. So yeah. with education and knowledge comes the power to do better. Mm. And I think it's important to just give your hair and yourself a break and also from embrace time who to you time. are, right? 100%. Don't be afraid to embrace who you naturally are. 100%. That's also, that's, that's, there's power in that. 100%. Gail, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the education. Thank you for sharing. Uh, your your journey. I know that it's it's not something that's easy to talk about, but mm -hmm. you 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 have it, and and you carry so much confidence, yeah. um, and have the stunning aura about you. So thank you for your journey I appreciate and, and sharing it. all of thank that. You thank you for the time. Your thank time. you so much. My yeah. pleasure. That was uh, Gail Mabalane. She's chatting to us uh, about alopecia, as we are observing uh, Alopecia Awareness Month. This is something that she's gone through personally, and she's now created her own hair care range uh, to fight this battle as well. Very.